the Pacific Crest Trail kidnapper has been caught. Finally, after several years. And I, for one, am thrilled to hear about it. Gosh, if you guys don't know about this story, I'm gonna tell you about it. It's really sad, honestly. There's not really a happy ending, but I guess the happy ending is this guy finally, after decades of just being a horrible person and a con artist and an abuser, has finally been captured. So if you guys don't know this story, I would recommend going back and reading the Backpacker Magazine article about this. It came out in 2019. I'll link it down below. But I'm gonna give you a summary and tell you all about it. This is all alleged for these specific PCT crimes. The guy was never uh, charged or prosecuted. So it's all alleged, but I personally do believe it. This story fascinates me because I started my through hike of the AT in 2018. I very well could have done the PCT, so I could have come into contact with this guy. Luckily, I didn't because I wasn't on the PCT. But this poor woman. All right, so in 2018, 62-year-old trans woman Kira Moon set out, set out on the PCT. So she set out on the PCT. She had been living on disability in California from, I guess, an injury she had gotten and she couldn't work. And she kind of wanted to change her life around. So she set out on the PCT, even though she was not an experienced backpacker, wanted to go out and change her life, as many of us do by going out on long trails. And she got about 10 days in to Julian, California, got to a restaurant, a Mexican restaurant where a lot of hikers hang out, they'll wait tables and they'll stay at the restaurant. So she gets there and she meets this guy, James Perillo. She's not sure what to think of him at first, but she sticks around the restaurant for a few days. It really starts to like the guy. And then he asks her like, hey, why don't you wait a few days for me? I'm injured right now. Um, why don't you wait for my injury to heal up for a few days? And then we can set out together and hike north to Canada. And you know, she's pretty inexperienced. He presents himself as, first of all, a really good guy. There's Shamrock, by the way. <laughs> We're on the hike. So he presents himself as a really good guy, former military, says he's a deep sea diver for Greenpeace. Basically, kind of seems like he might be able to be a safety blanket for her. He seems like a good guy. She likes him and she thinks, hey, why not? I'll wait for this guy. So she waits around for about a week and then they set out north together on the PCT. She had taken a photo of him while they were in town and she posts a photo of him on Facebook. Just something along the lines of like, oh, my new friend that I'm hiking with. Very normal, right? <laughs> he sees it and goes absolutely ballistic on her and starts screaming at her for hours. Makes her stare him straight in the eyes while he's screaming at her. She tells him, you know, maybe it would be best if I just continued north by myself. At that time, he grabs her by the neck and starts beating her. And for the next few months, she is stuck with this guy because every time she starts talking about leaving, he beats her. He starts raping her. He takes the SIM card out of her cell phone so she can't contact any of her friends or family in the outside world. He takes her debit card. He makes her start wearing a ring that he buys for her from her debit card and starts telling other hikers on the trail that they're married. You know, he keeps trying to present himself on trail as I'm this tough, kind military guy. I'm like taking care of her. She can't do this on her own. She can't even carry her own stuff. <sighs> Meanwhile, he's just abusing her. He's kidnapped her. He's taken complete control of her. He's sexually assaulting her. He's beating her. It's just horrible. And he makes her distance herself from her family and friends. She is a surrogate son, someone who, you know, she was partnered up with this woman decades before. She was acting as a, a stepmom to this, this boy and he grows up they're still very close. His name is Jason Storm. 
and she basically really pushes Jason away and is like, you never took care of me. I haven't felt like I had family in so long. Like everyone just left me on my own. And he's really upset because he thinks they have this amazing friendship and really cares about her and she's just pushing him away. And so he's like, what gives? But of course, James Perillo had been forcing her to say all those things to him. Anyway, he gets suspicious, his girlfriend gets suspicious. And so the girlfriend starts looking into this guy, James. And what she finds is not good. What she finds is decades of violent crimes, of this guy being a con artist, all of this crazy stuff. Seriously, go back and read the Backpacker Magazine article about it. It's a lot. <laughs> not gonna talk about it all here, but this guy is just not a good guy. Sorry if you can hear Shamrock running in the leaves. <laughs> He's like right underfoot. <laughs> Shamrock. The girlfriend's name, by the way, is Brandy Valenza. I had to go back and look at my notes. So Brandy is super concerned. She starts a Facebook group or a Facebook page called Find Kira Moon. And she puts that out there and tells people they're on the PCT. She's really concerned. This is what might be going on. And she just puts out a call to action, like help us find Kira. We think she's in danger. So around this time, James starts acting more and more erratic and more controlling. He takes Kira off the PCT and he takes her over to the California Coast Trail. Except once they get there, they're not really hiking. They're just sort of hanging out in the back country. He's watching a lot of porn. He's of course still abusing her. He's threatening to kill her and her family. But one good thing that he does is he starts trusting her more. She's been with him at this point for about five months. It's September. And he starts leaving her alone when he goes to the grocery store. So he'll go to the grocery store and he'll leave her at Starbucks or whatever. And she starts to think like, this could be the way that I escape. So he goes to the grocery store one time and she times him for how long that he's gone and lets her out of his sight. So the next time that he goes to the grocery store and leaves her at Starbucks, she makes a break for it. She finds an urgent care center and she runs inside. And from there, she calls the police. He's arrested inside the grocery store and he spends one night in jail. But on the bright side, that one night of him in jail is enough for her to escape and get back on her own. And she reaches out to Jason Storm and tells him what happened, you know, tells him that she's so sorry that she had been saying those horrible things to him via email. She was being controlled by this horrible manipulative man. She also tells the police the entire story of what happened. And she also finds out at the urgent care center that she's got broken ribs from the beatings that she sustained from this guy, James. The sheriff's office doesn't take her that seriously, doesn't pursue an investigation, and he's never charged for any of these crimes. It's complete BS, but they didn't think that they had a strong enough case and they didn't look at her medical records. They didn't talk to witnesses. They really didn't dive deep into it at all. And they kept saying the investigation was still open, but they weren't actually investigating. Again, complete BS. But apparently they didn't think that there was gonna be enough evidence. They also thought that a jury wouldn't convict him because she wasn't a sympathetic enough wit or victim, I guess, because she had been on disability. She was a trans woman. They just didn't think it would go anywhere. So they didn't bother, apparently. So that's kind of the end of their story together. He goes off, continues his, uh, his abusing of other people, allegedly being a con artist. He is seen again on the PCT. People start putting out warnings about it. He's seen also on the Continental Divide Trail, the CDT, where he's telling people that he is a cancer patient stage four cancer of some sort. And Kira sadly becomes a homeless drifter because he had taken all of her money pretty much. So she had money saved up in her bank account that she was gonna use to pay rent while she was on the PCT. He took all her money so she couldn't pay. 
so she was evicted from her place, didn't have anywhere to go, ended up homeless. And then just a few months later, she died in a trailer fire. Super, super tragic ending to what was already a horrible story. And then in the months before her death, she must have had P PTSD because she was just having nightmares constantly. She just couldn't get away from the memories of him. She was terrified and constantly having nightmares. So that's where Kira's story ends. Again, super tragic. God, I just, it, just, it makes me so mad that she wasn't treated better by the justice system. But anyway, but the good news is that on February 7th, 2023, he was finally arrested and charged with a whole host of crimes because he had gotten caught kidnapping, beating, abusing another woman who apparently he had met at a gas station in New Mexico. He introduced himself, he's a real charming guy, tells her he needs a ride to Arizona. So she gives him a ride, they start a consensual relationship. And then within a month, the abuse starts. He kidnaps her, takes her phone, takes her money, holds her hostage for a year. And then finally, she is able to escape and run to a gas station a year later and gets him charged and arrested in New Jersey. So I, for one, hope he's charged with, hope he's found guilty of all the charges and spends the rest of his life rotting. <sighs> the whole thing just makes me so mad, but Another element of that for me is that, you know, I think the trail community generally is just so amazing and generous and kind and just like to take advantage of somebody when they're on this new journey, when they're in this vulnerable state, they're not an experienced backpacker, to pick them out as being a weak person that you can help when you're just going to kidnap and abuse them. I, uh, it just makes me so mad but I am really thankful that he was finally caught. And allegedly the police in New Jersey are also looking into these other, other times when he had kidnapped and abused women. There may have been seven women that he had kidnapped and abused even before Kira. I'm sure if these are the crimes that we're hearing about, there are a lot more. So I hope that they really slam this guy and he rots in prison for the rest of his life. So yeah, that's the, that's the sad story of the PCT kidnapper and how he's been caught. By the way, I got the updates about, the, about him being caught in New Jersey from the trek, so I'll also link that article below so you can see all the info. Thanks for watching, you guys. Be safe out there. Please don't let this scare you away from the long trails. It's obviously not a normal occurrence. Most people out there are wonderful. But obviously, be safe, trust your intuition, be aware of your surroundings. And if you see something that seems wrong or amiss, you know, maybe, maybe say something, maybe pay attention, maybe try to help someone out if you think they're in a bad situation. All right, you guys, I'll talk to you later. See ya.